An Excel worksheet is made up of rows and columns. Notice that the columns are labeled alphabetically and the rows are numbered. Excel 2007 now supports up to 1 million rows and up to 16,000 columns per worksheet. This is a lot of area to create your data. Where the rows and the columns intersect, this is a cell. Notice that when you click a cell up here in the left hand portion of the formula bar, you get a name box or a cell reference. The cell reference includes the column and the row label. So this cell is referenced as C5 because it's in column C, row 5. Having a way to reference what cell you're located in is a big advantage when working in Excel. It allows you to apply formulas and functions to data that might be within that cell, as well as to know exactly what cell you're located in or that you're working on within your worksheet. You can input both numeric data and alphanumeric data into a cell. Numeric data can be numbers, dates, formulas, or functions, anything that has a numeric value. Alphanumeric is any text that does not have numeric value, such as plain text, labels, or informational and descriptive data. Excel recognizes both types of data and allows mathematical formulas and functions to be applied based on its type. We will explore functions and formulas later in this tutorial. To add data to the worksheet, first select the cell that you want the data to appear, and then just type. I'm going to go ahead and type in my name, and notice that my name is longer than the column width. Excel by default, if there's nothing in the cells directly to the right of the cell that you're inputting data, will automatically extend that data to the right, allowing it to flow across the empty column cells to the right of it. You can enter this data and notice that down here in your status bar, you have Enter. This is telling you that the data hasn't been entered into that cell yet and you need to press enter. Pay attention to your status bar as you work in Excel and it provides hints or information that might need to be performed to input the data correctly. So I'll go ahead and push enter on my keyboard and my data has been entered. If you want to delete this data, simply reselect the cell and notice that up here in the formula bar, if you wanted to get rid of just part of that data, you can simply highlight it by clicking and dragging, press the backspace or delete key on your keyboard, and then press enter again to input the data and notice you've made the change to just part of what was in the cell. If you wanted to delete the entire cell or data within the cell, select that cell and then immediately push your backspace or your delete key and it will delete that information, all of it that was in the cell, and then press enter to enter your data. Now to work on our project for the Raspberry Brigade, we need to start a spreadsheet and the one we are going to start is the product list. So what I'd like everyone to do is come up here to A1 and let's type in the Raspberry Brigade product list. Don't worry that it extends to the right. Let that flow and then press enter and notice your mouse or your cursor moves down to the next active cell which is A2 and then go ahead and press enter again to move your active cell or your cell reference down to A3 and let's go ahead and type in product as our label for this column and again press enter to move your active cell down to A4 and then type in one of the first products and we'll call this raspberry muffins and then we'll also do blueberry muffins. If you make a mistake either come up here to your formula bar and correct it Again, remember to enter your data by pressing enter, or if it's the entire cell that you want to delete, again select that cell and then just press your backspace or your delete key to delete it and type in the correct term or label that you're applying. And again, press enter to enter that data. And you can see that we have started our product list for the Raspberry Brigade. We will do more with this in the following movies that make up this tutorial.